What is a cross-domain solution and what does it have to do with cybersecurity? Okay, imagine you're a scientist in a zombie apocalypse. You're safe in the lab, but you need to go out into the field to collect samples of the zombie virus to find a cure. While you're out in the field, you find the cure for the zombie virus, but you get bit. And now you go back to see the scientists and they won't let you back in the lab. So you take the cure and you write how to cure the zombie virus on a piece of paper. And you put the piece of paper up against the glass door of the lab. A scientist in the lab takes a picture of that piece of paper. Now, what have you done? You've just transferred information across the boundary, across a firewall of sorts the glass. And that information was sanitized. The zombie virus particles that were on the paper weren't brought across the barrier. That's pretty much the idea behind a cross-domain solution. You can pass stuff from a domain of low trust to a domain of high trust, sanitizing the information as you go. You can even pass information from a domain of high trust to a domain of low trust, stripping out sensitive information as you move this across the barrier. Now, cross-domain solutions are mainly used by the government or the military, and also in the civilian sector by some banking or personal finance applications. But it can be very useful in things like Internet of Things, anything where you're sucking down data from sources that you can't verify. And today, I'm going to show you how a cross-domain solution works, and you don't even need to know anything about programming. I'm going to walk you through it. And speaking of trust, there is one VPN that I trust with my personal data, and that is Atlas VPN. So just give me 30 seconds to pay the bills here. Click the link in the description below, and you can get Atlas VPN for only $1.83 a month for three years with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Those of you who watch my open source intelligence videos know that the Russians do not like what I'm doing, and I've gotten plenty of threats. In fact, I just got one today. So I use Atlas VPN to stay safe when I'm online debunking propaganda. Atlas VPN creates a secure tunnel from your computer through the public internet so that what you're looking at and where you are going is not viewable to governments, hackers, and people who want to do you harm. So click the link in the description below to get Atlas VPN for only $1.83 a month for three years with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks for sticking with me. Okay, so you might say, well, Ryan, I have a firewall. Why do I need a cross-domain solution? Well, heck, nobody said you can't have both. I mean, firewalls are absolutely necessary. They protect you against improper connection attempts and port scans and intrusions. But what if the data that's sent looks perfectly valid, but isn't? Take Internet of Things, for example. You have all these devices that were created by multiple vendors, some of which may or may not be reputable. And you're just going to let this data through a firewall and onto your server systems who knows whether the data those devices are sending you is actually valid? Let's say you have a bunch of remote weather sensors and they're all distributed. These sensors gather data from around a piece of critical infrastructure like a nuclear power plant or something. And the data gets sent through a firewall and into some sort of server where it's stored and archived. What if someone wanted to see if they could crash your system by intentionally sending bad data through the weather sensor into your systems? Now, this next part is going to take some coding, but don't worry about it if you don't know how to code. I'm going to walk you through everything. Now, by the way, the code for this and the PowerPoint that I'm using is all available on my GitHub. You can find that below or in the comments. Okay, let's say we have a weather sensor and it's dumb. All it does is send back its ID, its GPS location, a date stamp, and the temperature. It might look a little bit like this. Now, in my code, this would be a class, which is essentially a nugget of data that can hold information and do things. So I'm going to call this class weather update. And as you can see, sensor ID, date, temperature, and Fahrenheit. And then I actually split out the uh, latitude and longitude, the, lo the GPS location, just for easier reading when I was doing the program. Okay, so what happens when you send a perfectly valid and normal value to the program? I wrote something called a unit test, and this test will send values to my program so that we can see what it does. So I'm just going to send a temperature of 72 degrees. And uh, we'll actually step through this program step by step. And I'll actually show you um, what's going on as we step through it. Okay, we just hit our breakpoint, which is a little 
pin that we can put in our program. So we're going to step through this thing and we're actually going to go to a controller called a no CDS post. Let's step into this. And no CDS post just takes the value. And if I actually drop this value into my little watch window here, you can actually see here's all of our values. Here's the date time when this was done. Um, the uh, sensor ID is one and the temperature is 72 degrees. Everything's so good so far. So we're gonna step into this and we're gonna update our weather. We're going to add this new weather update to our list of sensors and everything's fine. Everything worked, that's great. But what if we have a value that looks totally valid but isn't? And here's a good example. So I'm gonna send this thing a temperature of negative 500 degrees, all right? Now, negative 500 degrees Fahrenheit is impossible because zero Kelvin, meaning absolute zero, is negative 459.67 degrees. So you should never be able to get to negative 500 degrees Fahrenheit. But you know what? If I run this test, this thing is going to get passed right over. And you'll see I go straight to update weather and I send this information right into the weather station, even though it's a totally invalid value. So I'm sure you can see how an attacker might start to send values that look valid but aren't to see if they can crash your system and gain information about what your system's doing from those activities. So you might want to close that loop. And this went right through the firewall. No firewall in the world is going to stop this information. So this is where the cross-domain solution comes in. Now we're going to actually take a look at the data coming in, we're going to look at it. We're going to make sure it's valid. If it's not valid, we're just going to throw it away. We're not even going to tell the sensor that it isn't valid. That way the enemy can't gain any intel on what we can and can't do. But if it is valid, then we're going to let it into the system. Now, in order to explain what we're going to do next, I have to talk about an if statement. An if statement is a simple programming concept that allows you to make decisions. Don't worry about this. I'm going to walk you all through it. Think of it like this. You're about to have dinner and a friend is coming over for dinner and asks you, hey, can I pick some gourmet ice cream up on the way to your place? And you say, yeah, sure. And the friend says, well, what do you want? And you say, well, uh, I like mint chip, but if they don't have mint chip, then get me chocolate. And if they don't have chocolate, then I just really don't want the ice cream. What you just created is an if statement. And here's what it looks like in code. You have your ice cream method. And if the ice cream is mint chip, then get the ice cream. Else if, if the ice cream is chocolate, then you get the chocolate. Else you don't get any ice cream. So now let's see how we can actually fit this in. So let's create a new controller method just called post and we're just gonna send our weather values up to that. And then we're gonna have a little thing here that says inspect the weather update. So we actually go into this inspect weather update. We are going to find a whole bunch of if statements where we're gonna check the time. If the date time of right now is less than the date time you were just sent, throw an error. If the temperature is below the coldest minimum, throw an error. If the temperature is hotter, throw an error. If the grids are wrong, throw an error. So once you get back the result, you can choose whether to update this value or send this data to a log for later evaluation. But what this program won't do is send bad data from the low side to the high side. That's it. All you're doing is taking data that's coming in from the domain of low trust and looking at it and validating it before you send it off to the area of high trust. That's really it. And this isn't just useful for cybersecurity. You yourself can use this to harden your own code. Pretty neat, huh? Thank you for watching.